So I had this hypothesis, and I was pretty confident about it. Better AI model writes a better PRD, right? Better PRD leads to a better build. So if you use GPT-52 Pro to generate your product requirements instead of 5.2 Instant, you should get a meaningfully better application on the other side. That made sense to me. So I tested it. Same app, eight different models generating PRDs. Everything from GPT-5 to Instant all the way up to 5.2 Pro. Then I fed every PRD into the same build system, Claude Code with Opus 4.5, in planning mode. Same builder, same process, every single time. And when I looked at the results, I could not tell them apart. That should not have happened. And the process of figuring out why led me somewhere I didn't expect. Okay, here's what I was building. Think Spotlight on Mac, but for words. You hit a hotkey, a panel pops up, you type a word, and instantly you get definitions, etymology, synonyms, related concepts, everything. If you misspell something, it catches that and shows you what you probably meant, even with little hints to describe the problem so that maybe you'll learn how to spell it next time. But here's the thing. It's not just dictionary words. Type apple and you might mean the fruit or maybe the company. The system needed to understand that context and show you both interpretations and kind of let you explore deeper. That was really the whole point. So I recorded a 15 minute uh, kind of voice memo describing what I wanted, all of the features, how it should feel, the experience I was going for, and that became what I call my intent document. Then I gave that same document to eight different models with identical instructions, basically turn this into a PRD, which is just a product requirements document or kind of the, the structure document, the spec that you might hand to a development team actually. And then I took every single one of those PRDs and fed them into the exact same build system, which as I mentioned was Claude code with Opus 4.5 in planning mode. It's the same build environment, same execution model, the only variable was which AI wrote the PRD. This was all intentional to control just for the PRD quality. My hypothesis was so obvious, I wasn't sure it was even going to be worth sharing. So GPT-5.2 Pro would crush it. The PRD from the smartest model would produce the most complete product. GPT-5.2 Instant would probably miss tons of features. There'd be a clear correlation between the model intelligence and output quality. So. Let me show you what actually happened. So I'm starting with, you'll see the names up here just in case, GPT-5 too fast. This is that instant model. If you go to ChatGPT and choose instant, this is what you'll be running. So it comes back super fast and gives you a, a, a reasonable response, but you wouldn't expect it to be a great PRD. And if we come in here and search for something like horse, you'll see what it's trying to do is it's giving us horse with common misspelling here, and it will tell us that this is showing us the results of horse, even though we had typed something else in. It is not giving us a definition of what changed. That's one of the things that we're really looking for, is if you type in a misspelling, this one does correct for it, as you can see. But also, if you type in a misspelling, it should show you what you misspelled to help you next time. All right, the next one is from Sonnet. You can see, once again, horse, horse is corrected. It just shows us the results from horse itself. Excellent. And how about from GPT-5 to thinking? So this is kind of the thinking model that you would go to if you went to chat GPT. You can see here, we're starting to see a little bit of the call out that I had in the actual original request that I wanted to see what was typed in and what the difference was. And in fact, this one goes so far as to kind of give us an inline diff, character inline diff, which is nice. All right, all the way down to, this is Opus 4.5. If this one gives you that it's corrected, it doesn't call out what was corrected necessarily. And then something like GPT-5.2 Pro finds hours, does not find horse. So this, by the way, this is the Pro model. This one took about 15 minutes. And the first one that we showed, oh, excellent, there you go. The first one we showed took about 15 seconds. So GPT-5.2 Instant took less than 15 seconds. This one took more than 15 minutes. And disregard the errors, who knows, I give a little bit of an allowance for if it didn't build immediately on first delivery. So I did work with some of these and maybe I missed the mistake here for misspelling. No big deal. All right, I know that seems like enough. You can kind of see from instant all the way up to pro, but I went a little bit further. So let's imagine that you just took your request, that 15 minute conversation that I had with myself, 
kind of meandering around all the different features I wanted, and I went directly into Claude code and put it directly into planning mode, what would happen? This is that version. So this one keyed in on a little bit something different that was in the system at one point, which was trying to immediately find uh, information with a local dictionary. So it can't find H-O-U-R-S-E, which is a misspelling of horse. I haven't said that yet, but that's really what we're trying to do here. But it can find these others. It's a little tricky, but it absolutely, of course, works. And okay, how about even crazier? You thought that one was crazy. I just took my request, no PRD, directly to planning mode. We got what we just saw. And now I said, to heck with a plan, if these things are so so good, let's just go direct to execution. So I took what I had that conversation about 15 minutes, put it directly into execution, no planning mode with Opus 4.5 and said, boom, build it. This is what happened. Now, admittedly, this one I want to call out. I think this is a change to uh, Opus or to Claude Code that is really very valuable. Claude Code is now kind of looking around for things that it doesn't understand, and then it goes into planning mode. So I think what's actually happening underneath the covers is it actually does go into planning mode, ask questions, do the normal things that planning would normally do. So there might not be a real direct execution if you put something this complicated in. That's the reason I think this happens. However, by the way, this is one of the best looking ones. So most important, I'm looking at these nine builds and I can't tell you clearly which one came from Pro and which one came from Instant. That was the real hypothesis. There are differences, some missed things that other hit, and some missed more things than others altogether. But they basically have the same features. They handle definitions roughly the same ways. You can see some of them didn't quite work in exactly the same way. They deal with concepts similarly, but some didn't really deal with concepts well at all. But really, the UI variations are kind of just noise, probabilistic differences that you'd get by running the same PRD twice in general. We all know about that problem. So I decided to build an evaluation that I could run on every model to take a look and let each one of those systems build out their own kind of uh, definition of how well they think they met the PRD that was put into them. And so we end up with these kinds of scores here. Everything, by the way, scores in basically the 80s. And you can see like GPT-5.2 fast, this is the instant model, scores basically the highest on this chart. Um, and then Opus 4.5 right behind it. And then GPT-5 thinkings and then direct execution scored very high. And if you scroll down um, into the 77 area, uh, you get kind of the, the pro version and the direct planning one was really actually weirdly one of the worst. But really, they're very, very close. I wouldn't read too much into these numbers. This is just an indicator of are there major differences? If we go into the way that it kind of um, represents itself, you can see how much overlap there is for all of the different features that are being built. And if we go into something like, let's say the pro model and see what it missed, multiple information panels, it missed that. Copying to the clipboard, it didn't quite get that right. Um, multiple interpretations, it did not get multiple interpretations at all. So there were some things that it missed completely. And if we look at like the fast build, it got most of these things, except that didn't get derivation. So it didn't do etymology nearly as well. And misspelling, it did not do the, vis the misspelling uh, quite as well, the visualization as we saw in the beginning. All right, so great. We have all these numbers. We have a mishmash of different applications that are being built. What does this all tell us? This is now very confusing, and this is where I found myself. Some of the confusing points here are like the PRDs themselves are actually kind of dramatically different sizes. Some are up to 400 lines, and the smallest one, the instant one, was only like 50 lines. That's massively different levels of detail and yet these similar results. And so that became very confusing to me. This completely broke my mental model. I mean, I was actually ready to shoot a video. This, this seemed so obvious, I wasn't sure I was gonna share it, like I said, because I thought this, everybody will know, I'm gonna shoot this video and say, oh, guess what? To get the best PRD, which will give you the best product, you, use, you have to use the best model that you have access to. That's what I thought I was gonna have to do. And in reality, obviously, that is absolutely not the case. So what are we left with here? Okay, so, so what's going on here? There's something happening inside the Claude code planning step that I didn't fully appreciate. So what's really happening is every PRD 
regardless of how smart the model is that wrote it, goes through this powerful planning filter, and that filter smooths out everything. So that's really the trick. What do we do about that? Okay, so the practical implication of this, if you're using a sophisticated planning system and Claude code in planning mode qualifies, the model you use for your PRD matters way less than you'd think. This is actually great news for everyone. If you don't have access to GPT-5.2 Pro or something like that, you're perfectly fine. Use a pretty good model and you should be able to get a pretty good PRD out of it and something like Opus in planning mode will take care of the rest. If you wanna use the free tier GPT or Gemini, any frontier model that's doing some kind of thinking will probably do exactly what you need. But here's where I wasn't exactly satisfied because roughly the same obviously isn't exactly the same. And I kept wondering, what if the problem isn't model intelligence? What if it's something else entirely? I had a theory. The issue isn't how smart the model is, the issue is how much intent survives the translation. Look, when you describe what you want to an AI and ask for a PRD, something's bound to get lost. And really, it's almost always the why behind your features. You know, that feeling you were going for, the stuff that's kind of hard to specify, but really easy to lose. So I created a new version of my request with the same intent document, but I added several paragraphs at the end. Explicit instruction saying, carry the intent through. Don't just list features, explain why each one matters. So basically trying to carry my voice on, preserve the nuance. The PRD should feel like a conversation, not just a checklist. I gave this enhanced request to GPT-5.2 thinking, so just kind of the thinking model, and Opus 4.5. And this time something different definitely happened. When I ran the evaluation, GPT-5.2 thinking scored about the same as before, mid 80s. It tried to carry intent, but it still formatted everything like a typical GPT spec. Clean, structured, but sterile. Opus 4.5, 99%. Not 89%, not 91%, 99%. Every single requirement I'd mentioned was in there. And not just listed, it was explained. The why was preserved. It read like I'd written it myself, just organized. This is a 12 point gap from the next closest model. That's not noise, that's signal. So I decided to build it, the 99% kind of PRD that we were talking about. And here it is. So. I assumed it would absolutely be perfect, of course, because it had everything in it. And it does have a lot. As you can tell, it is actually showing me synonyms for things. It's showing me the results, the etymology for things. But this one, you'd be surprised to find, actually can't handle the misspellings like it needs to in not being able to deal with the response, which is just kind of surprising. And if we look over at the GPT-5.2 version, which is a lower version, it was a 89% or something like that, you can see it gets through all of the different misspellings, changes, and hints, has a thesaurus, has etymology, has a lot of the things. But the problem is, it really is still missing quite a bit. And when we talk about especially something like this one here, it definitely doesn't hit all of the marks, all of the 99% items that are inside of that PRD. We know for a fact inside of that PRD, it's got everything it needs. And it still turned out like this. So what was going on here? 18 items were missing. Not small things. Word of the day integration, missing. Sound effects, gone. Auto dismiss behavior, nowhere. These weren't edge cases. These were features I explicitly asked for that made it into the PRD that just disappeared during planning. The planning step was dropping 20 to 30% of my requirements. Not because they weren't clear, not because they were unreasonable, they were just lost. So I ran it again. I gave Opus the plan it had written, the original PRD, and said, find everything in the PRD that's not in the plan and give me a fallout list. Then update the plan to include those items. After the second pass, eight items were missing instead of 18. After the third, the remaining items were things that I hadn't really specified all that well. Anyway, they were pretty kind of ambiguous. So it was legitimate that they were kind of missing and wrong. And so that's what I asked it to add. So 
This is the finding, not use a smarter model for your PRD. The finding is your planning step is probably dropping a quarter of your requirements and you don't even know it. Okay, and so here we are. This is the version of the application as the, uh, you know, as we've triple planned it and kind of come out with a full blown version and iterated on it a little bit. So this is what the application looks like. It has a lot of the features that we would anticipate at this point that you can see all of the different aspects of the original request inside of it. And I wanted to kind of very briefly, once again, describe to you the pattern that got me to this versus any of the previous planning builds. So essentially, I make sure that I carry intent over into the PRD. I think that's a critical aspect that I will be talking about more on this channel very soon. I'm very interested in intent, but we need to make sure that intent isn't scrubbed away when we're building our plans, that PRD. Once we get that PRD into the system, I allow it to plan against it. And then I say, okay, you think you're done planning, compare yourself against the PRD, make sure you're covering everything. I do that once or twice, then you're gonna have a completed version of a plan. Now, what I believe is that they should be adding this into the planning mode into, into something like Claude Code and Cursor and other tools when they talk about planning, they should be able to evaluate against the original request. That should be a straightforward thing to do to make sure that the plan that they've created kind of considers everything that they were asked to do. It's kind of surprising that they're not doing that. And that's where I found myself. And that's exactly where we are, which is, oh wow, the planning mode was actually the problem. It was scraping off all of these edges and I didn't know it. What actually matters here is getting your intent to survive the journey and then verifying that nothing got dropped along the way. Your intent is the actual you in all of this. The gap between your best idea and what gets built isn't about using GPT-5 Pro versus 5.2 Instant. It's about the silent losses at each handoff. The intent that doesn't make it into the PRD, the requirements that don't make it into the plan, the features that don't make it into the build. So basically, check your work at each step. That's it. <laughs> That's the finding that three days of building the same app like nine times actually taught me. Look, if this changed how you think about AI-assisted development, let me know in the comments. I'm curious whether you've seen similar patterns or this is new to you. And if you're building with AI tools regularly, subscribe. I'm doing more experiments like this all of the time. I can't seem to stop. Thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.